Hello, this video will cover the weighted average cost flow assumption under the perpetual system. Now this method will basically be a continuation of the FIFO and the LIFO video that you've probably seen right before um, hand. And under the weighted average method, we're going to treat each item um, as the same. So we're going to take the cost for all of the items that we have available and we're going to come up with a weighted average cost for per unit. To do that, we'll use our same information, beginning inventory, which we had 20 units at a price or a cost of $20, um, $10 for each of the units. And that gave us a grand total, 20 times 10 is 200. We had two more purchases that occurred in January, giving us a grand total of $710 for our total cost of our goods available for sale. And then we had 65 units available for sale. So using these two factors, we're going to compute our weighted average cost per unit. So using this formula, we'll take the total cost of goods available for sale. We'll divide that by the total units available for sale. So that means we will take our cost of goods available for sale. Divide that by our units available for sale. And we come up with a $10.92 weighted average price. So each item we are going to um, use the $10.92. So for our cost of goods sold, we're going to look at how many units we sold. We sold again 25, and again it was sold on January 31st, which is after our last purchase. And we'll go ahead and put in um, no date needed. So we're going to just go ahead and put in our units of 25, and then we are going to put in the $10.9 two cent price, so I'm going to reference that in Excel. Again, if you press the F4, F is in Frank, 4 key, um, what it'll do is it'll make sure that we are always using that same exact formula. And we'll take the, the $10.92, multiply it by 25. You see that it converted it to 11, it just rounded it to the nearest decimal places, but if you really want to see what it looks like, you can just go ahead and um, increase it, the decimal places by two. So our total cost of goods sold under the weighted average method will be 273. Now for the ending inventory, again, if we have 65 units available for sale, we sell 65. So if you take 60 minus the 25, you'll get 40 units on hand. I'll take my cap lock off for next time. So you'll take the 40 units and you can either reference here to get the same one or you can do a control C to copy it and since it already has the formatting it'll go ahead and move that over. So $10.92 10 multiplied by 40 units gives us a grand total of 437 and so this will be our um, ending inventory and under the weighted average method we'll have a debit of 437 for ending inventory and then we'll have a 273 for a cost of goods sold and that completes this method and again we're going to check it make sure it's correct if you take the 273 at the 437, you should get the 710, which represents our cost of goods available for sale. And if you have any questions, post in the discussion. And one more thing, the summary. Let's go ahead and look at all three methods, we have FIFO, we have LIFO, and our weighted average method, 
437. They all add up to the cost of goods available for sale. Keep in mind that the weighted average is somewhere in between the LIFO and FIFO. And then the selling price, of course, would be the same regardless of each assumption. But your gross profit will be different because it's based on your cost of goods sold. And you'll see the differences in cost of goods sold under the three assumptions. So the facts are the same. It's just our assumptions are different. And remember, today is a great day to learn accounting.